It looks like we're going to conclude the introduction in the Desert Fathers by Helen Waddell. Well, I mean, she's the one that is rendering the translation. Yet, one intellectual concept they did give to Europe. Eternity. No, not really. Here again, they do not formulate it. They embody it. These men, by the very exaggeration of their lives, stamped infinity on the imagination of the West. They saw the life of the body as Paulinus saw it. Actui temporis umbra. A shadow at sunset. The spaces of our human life set over against eternity. It is the undercurrent of all Antony's thought our most brief and poor. Think, you, the bargains hard, to have exchanged the transient for the eternal, to have sold earth to buy heaven. Twelve centuries later, Donna could pray to be delivered from thinking that this earth is only for our prison framed, are that thou covetous to them whom thou lovest are that they are maimed from reaching this world's sweet, who seek thee thus. It is the rich compromise of the 17th century of the common era. Humanism. But for the 4th century, you know, where they composed the Bible in Greek and then they rewrote it after towards the end of the century, um, I think in the 70s, so the 30s and the 70s or something like that, um, with more mentions of Christ. But, uh, the king, uh, but for the fourth century, the kingdom of God was still the pearl of great price hidden in a field for which a man must sell all that he had if he would buy that field. Paganism, which is the word that until 1967 Catholics used for all monotheists, all non-Christians, it had nothing to do with the pagan, gentile, heathen words in a literal sense, but they said that it was daylight. Augustine's queen light, sovereign of the senses, rich in its acceptance of the daylight, earth. But Christianity came first to the world as a starlit darkness into which a man steps and come suddenly aware of a whole universe. Kind of like when you use magic squares or, or guided meditations or something, right? Um, except that part of it which is beneath his feet, if light can thus conceal, wherefore not life. Experience was to bring compromise, the alternation of day and night, the vita mixta of action and contemplation, wherein, says Augustine, the love of truth, doth ask a holy quiet, and the necessity of love doth accept a righteous busyness. But the Desert Fathers knew no compromise. They have no place among the doctors. They have no great place among even the obscure saints. But the extravagance of their lives is the extravagance of poetry. Nel mondo ad ora ad ora ma in segnavate cum uam sa eterna. In the world, hour by hour, they taught us how man makes himself eternal, starved and scurvy-ridden as the first voyagers across the Atlantic. These finished with bright day and chose the dark. And paradoxical as it seems, their denial of life of earth has been the incalculable enriching of it. And they have affected the consciousness of generations to which they are not even a name. They thought to devaluate time by setting it over against eternity, and instead they have given it an unplumbed death. It is as though they first conceived of eternity as everlastingness, the production to infinity of a straight line, and in time men came to know it vertical as well as horizontal, and to judge and experience by its quality rather than its duration. 
The sense of infinity is now in our blood, and even those of us who see our life as a span long, beginning in the tomb and ending in the coffin, are a shovel full of gray ash. Each moment of it has eternal fright. Now, before I get into the poem that follows, isn't that what the whole Faustian pack thing is about? Um, wanting, uh, turning to Me uh, Mephistopheles instead of God for an experience, and you're willing to give your life for that experience. Um, Lucifuge, Raphael Kell, the myth is, well, you know, wealth. And, oh, what's, what's the other one, right? Um, un punto, sola e maggior letargo. One point of time hath deeper burdened me than all the centuries that have forgotten how Argo's shadow startled first the sea. The sacula sin fin ad requiscendum, the ages of quiet without end, have been transformed into the boetheus definition of eternity, that which encloseth and possesseth the whole fullness of the life everlasting, from which the knot of the future is absent, and knot of the past hath flown away. Not one of the desert fathers could have conceived it. They might even have denied it as her a heresy, yet the mind of man moved a stage nearer to it with each moment of the ravaged lives. Now, I guess I should turn towards the Enix, but um, what did Christianity bring? Um, yeah, just a bunch of quotes here. Um, uh, I mean, where the quotes are from. Um, on page four, no lit, quaso, virtus, qua in nobis est, mentum tantum retribuit humanum, vita b, ant, is it Antony? Uh, 15. And page seven, we have a quote O Roma nobilis orbis et domina, conctarum urbium, excellentissima. Horacio, Mertutum, Sanguin, Rubea, Albis et Virginum, Lias, Candida. And page eight, we have the quote Squalet, Lucifugis, Insula, Plena, Virus. Munera, Fortuna matuunt dum damna verentur quisquam spante miser ne miser esse quat quanam perversi rabis tam stolta carebri dum mala formidis nec bana passe pate sive soas repetunt factorum Ergastula poenas trestia siu nigro iscera fela tument. And another quote of De Redito Suo 2, 439 to 452, but this time it's 519 to 526. Impulsus furis homines. Teresque reliquit et turpem latabram credulis exol agit inflix cutat iluvi calestia pasca secpe premit lasis savior ipsa dice num rogo deterior Kirkais, secta, beninis, tonk, mutabantur, corpora, nunc, enemy. And on page 14, quis mehe locum avium palterat ostender, vita b ant 14. Um, and Theodosia said, Filias suas. Traditit non ut imperator sed liberorum atac 
Capulorum Loco Habendas and page 12 we have Longa Esperima Squalida et Plain Arida Hist Laos 2 um, and we go on to 23 where we have from De Division Natra volume 25 PL 122, 912, et lux, inaccessibilis, accessum, prabuit, in ipso omnia, visibilia, et invisibilia, hoc est, sensibilis, et intelligibilis, mundus, restauranta, inc, unatatum, nefibilum, revocata, sunt. And from Paradiso, 33, 94 to 96, we uh, find in page 25, Un punto sala me e magior letargo che mentisic secoli alla impresa che fe notuno emerar le ombra de argo. Uh, 24, we have Atium sanctum quaret Charitas veritatis negotium uistum suscipit necitatas caritatis from Augustine Civil Die 1919 cum humana vit spatia aternitati comparata bravissima sint et parva vita okay um so that's that's it with that. Um, but one thing we need to consider um, is Christianity just changing the names and you know putting their saints to, and stuff to replace that sort of thing. Um, certainly, for the most part, unlike um, some faiths where the strongest numbers were in places where you didn't have um, you know you didn't have the rule, you just had people going there, living their lives as, as economically and stuff. Um, Christianity was largely forced upon Europe, and, you know, some of the so-called gods and goddesses got relisted as saints. But if you look at uh, uh, the Continental Divide at some point, they just said, you know, because it does make sense to include the Afghanis and the Persians as part of Europe, and then on the other side you have the, the Hindus, um, so, you had the Slavic culture, you had the Teutonic Celtic culture, you had the Greek culture, the Roman culture, and the Norse culture as these dominant cultures that existed. Now, if you look at all that, why, what's, what's new? You know, it's, it's a good point. Any good or truth or just something that's labeled as something that Christians brought or established, what do these so-called pagans... Oh, and of course there was the... Of course there was the... Um, the uh, you know, the Persian culture. Um, which kind of flipped the other way, that's why they said, okay, Persians and the Semites, they're not usually Christian, so we're going to put them as a different thing. But the Semites, for the most part, okay, you know, like the Continental Divide on some maps is up by Turkey. So Syria and Israel and all that were, are, li are listed under Africa, and Turkey and onwards is Europe, but... And I, I kind of get that, but not including Persia as part of Europe, there's just a whole bunch of reasons why that just doesn't make sense. But again, it's it's a religious divide. It's dividing the Christians, you know. Okay, we'll call them Caucasoid, you know, the, the brown-skinned people here and the, uh, and the uh, dark-haired but lighter people, um, you know, the Persians, um, are the Iranians is probably more historically accurate. Some people like one title more than another that's... You know, take your issue with that as you will. Um, 
because the Greco-Roman culture does, in, it does include the, the branch where you could say um, Turkey um, because Turkey is um, the, the philosophy and stuff that we know the Greeks for a lot of that actually started in the Turkey area but I'll find something where I can share that more cohesively.